By the grace of God, I will continue to preach in your hearing. The church must unhitch itself from W.E.B. Du Bois's, some people say Du Bois, it's okay. Problem of the color line, which has become a permanent deal in American society instead of going away and the church is at fault part eight the devil is at fault the church is at fault we should not in this country have the racial issues we have uh, and it has nothing to do with the present president only uh, it has to do with all of the presidents in recent years, and that includes President Obama and President Trump, and uh, and people in the church, because racism is still in the church, unfortunately. This is part eight, the lost souls of black folk and white folk, part 62. And yes, the Just Jesus Evangelistic Campaign, day 814, since January the 20th, 2017, day 1,179, since January the 1st, 2016, rolls on. Turn your Bibles to Acts chapter 17 verse 26 and God God hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation that they should seek the Lord if happily wherever you are you ought to be seeking the Lord if happily they might feel after him and find him though he be not far from every one of us for in him we live and move and have our being as certain also of your own poets have said. For we are also his offspring. Holy Father God in heaven, we praise you and we thank you for allowing us to see another beautiful day in America. And we give you the glory, the praise, and the honor for your love, your mercy, your grace, and your provision for such wretched and undeserving people as we are. And as your children, those of us who are truly born again, for only they will have the compunction and the desire and the felt need to do so, and that is to confess our sin. Even, Lord, uh, uh, sometimes when we can't put a finger on the sin that we've committed we know that we are a sinful people and we are capable of sinning and before we serve you we always want to confess our sins to you and, and, and invite you to search our hearts and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness so that we can be clean and fit for your use and grant us your grace and the power of your Holy Spirit to permanently repent of all sin in our lives including racism prejudice and pride 
and preachers not standing up to the evil in the church and in the world, even uh, against a rebellious and disobedient president, be he white or black. Lord, forgive us of failing you and not doing our part for you told us you want us to be the salt in the world and, uh, and, and, and if we're going to be the salt it irritates and so Lord help us to irritate those who are not obeying the gospel of Christ and who are not obeying your holy word as a shining light and witness bringing our light from under the bushel and letting our little light shine. We pray that you would empty us of ourselves, crucify our flesh afresh and anew. For those of us who are saved and born again, fill us afresh and anew with the fullness and the power, the unction and the anointing, the fruit and the liberty of your Holy Spirit. And Lord, we already have seen that the devil is busy and he's trying to play his little game of hide and seek and and then do a major pounce when folks have their guards down. So Lord, help us never to put our guard down. Help us to be watchful, help us to be prayerful. Help us to pay attention, help us to keep our eye on the ball and on the goal. And Lord, we pray that you cast out that satanic, demonic spirit of Judas, betrayal and sabotage and foolishness. That stinky spirit that always wants to and even enjoys trying to see something not go well in certain people uh, in our families and in our churches. They lurk around all the time. So Lord, give us sweet victory over the world, the flesh, and the devil so that lost souls would hear the gospel through it all so that uh, they would get saved. And we pray for that today and we pray for Christians to be revived again and help Christians to confess their sins and repent pray and seek your face and get back to you and their first love glorify your holy name and lift up your holy son the Lord Jesus Christ for it is in his name we pray and for his sake amen God bless you dear friends you may be seated <coughs> Let me say a big God bless you to all of our friends uh, who are live with us via six cameras going out of here around the world and uh, on speaker and live and then on demand. And we thank you for your love, your support, and for your prayers. Thank you for your encouragement and all the amens and hearts and comments. And we give God the glory, praise, and honor for all that you do, inviting others and so forth. Well, in 1784, in an effort to ease tension between the red man and the white man, Indians and whites in Virginia, a white man by the name of Patrick Henry of give me liberty or give me death fame proposed intermarriage between the red man and the white man. The eloquent orator stipulated that when white males or females married Indians, the red man the couples would receive 10 pounds immediately and five pounds more at the birth of each child. They, now don't get mad with me now, a white man uh, proposed this. One of, one of, one of uh, the uh, founders of this nation proposed this. They would also be recipients of tax breaks and free education for their male children up to age 21. 
with Patrick Henry's persuasiveness, the bill passed its first and second readings. However, by the time of the third reading, Patrick Henry had been elected governor, and without his overt participation, the bill ultimately failed. Some have wondered how racial tensions throughout the history of our country would have been affected if this proposal had been approved. I said a white man proposed that, not a black man, not a red man. And don't be shocked at this because if you have some discernment is happening, some people are intentionally hooking up for the sake of the almighty dollar uh, in professional sports. Uh, and uh, I can't get into all of it right now, uh, but not for peace sake, but for uh, making sure that the NBA especially, uh, con continues to be profitable. Uh, so maybe you'll hear about that later on down the road if you have not heard about that yet. But anyway, uh, some intermarriage has been done intentionally down through the years. Be that as it may, many Americans alive today can still remember a time when the problem of the color line took on an ugly physical manifestation. There were signs over water fountains designating one for coloreds or blacks and one for whites. Blacks had to go through the back door of the theater, while whites didn't have to go sit up in the balcony so as not to be seen, while whites went through the front door. Blacks and whites didn't marry in those days. They didn't go to school together. They didn't go to church together. And didn't live beside each other if they could help it. The dividing line in most of the southern cities was the train tracks. Not only that, they were not even buried together. Now you know that's bad. There are graveyards that exist today for white folks only. And of course, black folks. In fact, when I was a child, I remember very clearly, I believe it was called the Shady Grove Graveyard, if I'm not mistaken. And that was the black folks' graveyard. There were no white folks in it. It was all grown over. Sad to say, we went back there and dishonored the graves, so many of us committing sins in the graveyard. Uh, the devil has a way of driving you to graveyards. But across town, the white folks had a beautiful uh, manicured graveyard, man. And it was just beautiful, sitting on a hill. But the black folks' graveyard, if you didn't know where it was, you couldn't find it because of all the bushes. But yet, black folk would still go back there on Mother's Day and put down flowers or Father's Day or whatever the case uh, it was. So those who crossed these barriers were often ostracized, ridiculed, rejected by their communities, had their homes and businesses bombed or set on fire, and were sometimes killed. I told you about the time that I was invited to Bob Jones University.
they invited me to help them with their image. And uh, the big problem back then, they were strong on telling folks they believed that the Bible taught against interracial marriage, which was a lie, and I told them that was a lie. Now, I, I told them, now, if you want to, you don't want your daughters to marry black men and your boys to marry black women, just say that's your preference. But do not lie on the Bible, because that's killing your image. Big time. Don't, don't say that. Oh, yeah. And they said, well, I can show you. I said, no, you can't show me, man. I've, I've read the Bible for years now. You can't show me that. There's no law against interracial marriage. And, uh, and they, they received my advice. And they began to start changing things. And two of the men sitting there, one was Brother Sutton. I, I remember his name. The other one had a, 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 a last name started with an S as well. I can't remember his name. But they individually, not the university, well, I was traveling all over the world and preaching the gospel at that time. They began to support us, the, the two guys from Bob Jones University. Even though they did not agree with my stance, on an individual basis, they, they began to support my ministry. And I appreciated that. We needed that support at the time. Uh, but I told them the truth. The, the Bible doesn't teach that. Anyway, there were many, both black and white, who thought it best for blacks to go back to Africa, including Marcus Garvey and many white folks. There were many whites uh, who wanted whites only communities, and they still want that today. In many places. It is that way. And it's going to stay that way unless the church repents. For many of these people are in churches. Pastors of churches. And they don't want blacks in their communities or in their churches. And there are some blacks that way as well. Not all, not many, but there are some. And back in those days, there were militant blacks who thought black Americans should get together and form their own nation inside of America. They were looking at property out west to make a black state. But if we look at Paul's speech to the Athenians, we find that God is sovereign over the times and places in which every member of his creation finds themselves existing. How many of you know that God will put you in situations with people that you really don't want to be put in? Just to stretch you just to get you out of your comfort zone. He'll do it. And God is in control of that. God will, if you will, force you to deal with people you don't want to deal with. Force you to accept people that you don't want to accept. He hath determined, the Bible says, the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. This is the verse that the folks at Bob Jones University were using. See, see, you black folks ought to be in Africa and so forth and so on. I read that, you know, I said, well, let me remind you now, you brought us over here. You brought us over here. Yeah, yeah, but you can go back. You know, you brought us over here, and we're here to stay. And I've traveled all over the world, and I thank God for that experience, including Africa. And there's no other place on earth I would rather be than in America. And I ain't going nowhere. Nowhere. I thank God I was born in America. 
I'm a natural born citizen. And uh, I love it. I love it. And that's why everybody's trying to get here. There's no place on earth like America. Be that as it may, in other words, ladies and gentlemen, when you live and where you live is under God's direction, whether you like it or not, regardless of your race, ethnicity, or nationality. If you are the only black family in your neighborhood today, God wants you to be there. God has put you there. God has caused you to have favor in the sight of the powers that be to, to allow you to be there. I know all about this. Now, I'm not going to tell you you can do what I do. Because you may not have the same favor on your life that uh, God has placed upon my life. I, so I'm not going to tell you uh, to move into a white neighborhood. If you want to, you prayed about it and God has given you peace and you have the favor of God and you'll be amazed at how people will accept you and let you be if you are the family or rather if you are the only white family on your street and I know of some whites they want to they want to live in a mixed neighborhood in fact some whites want to live in I'm talking about Christian folk want to live in a black community. Some, bless their hearts, have adopted black children. Uh, they have uh, participated in a, the foster care program raising up black children. And that's good. We thank God for that. Uh, I can, I can think of several families that have done that and that's a beautiful thing and black families ought to adopt some white children and when I speak about families and I know you don't want to hear it but I'm going to say it anyway I'm talking about a family made up of a man and a woman not a man and a man or a woman and a woman that is ungodly. Uh, God has not ordained that, and I don't care who likes it. Planned Parenthood, or nobody else can fire me. I'm working for God. Thank God, at least the, the lady who was the president of Planned Parenthood said, No, I'm not going to be calling folks a male if they are female and a female a male I no 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 <laughs> no I'm not doing that so they fired her after one year that don't that doesn't make any sense so we're talking about the God kind of family the male and the female together the husband and the wife and I will say to you contrary to our messed up nation that children need a father and a mother, amen, somebody. Oh, yes. Your children will grow out, grow up rather out of balance without a either a father or a mother. And sometimes you have uh, parents who are in the home, the name, who don't show up. And the children grow up out of balance. And be that as it may, uh, these are good developments white families moving into black Christian families moving into black communities black families moving into white communities sometimes God would have you to do that uh, not to smooth with the people and and uh, try to fit in and be buddy buddy with the people but to be a symbol to help them except somebody else who's different. If you are the only person of a particular race in your classroom or in your church or on your sports team, God knows you are there because he directed where you would be. 
and when you would be at this time in history. If you are part of a minority community, surrounded by a majority that is of another race or culture or language, take heart. God has directed the when and the where of your life. Amen, somebody. <clears throat> Conversely, if you are a part, or if you are part of the majority community, or if you are part of what some call a privileged community, you must understand that it is under God's direction that you live where you live and you have what you have and you get to do what you do and when you live he appointed the times and the bounds of your habitation it's a good thing it's okay this is silly talk by some people in the minority community that white folks need to hate themselves because they are privileged. They are the majority. Uh, they have been so blessed and they ought to feel our pain and uh, they ought to uh, take classes <laughs> on white privilege. That is so silly. That's so silly. No, 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 no. Here's what you do. You you make, you show yourself friendly, and you make friends with white folks, and you share in the privilege, man. That's what you do. You don't fight it. You join in, and you thank God for their privilege. And if you listen to me very carefully, I've told you this before, I'm going to tell you again, some of you black folks, you better find yourself a good white friend, a good Jewish friend, a good Mexican friend, a brown friend, a good red friend, and a good yellow friend. Because uh, God, ha God has put them here for a reason, and you can be a blessing to them, and they can be a blessing to you, man. Be smart. Don't get mad get E-Trade. Don't be mad about the situation. Make the best of the situation. And, and, and I believe in most cases Christians are the ones who can always make the best of a bad situation. I thank God for all people. I would not be where I am and get to do what I do if it had not been for black people God using black people in my life. I'm thinking of a black man right now. God touched his heart and his wife's heart to do something. I don't think they've ever done it for anybody else. <laughs> That's impossible. I'm thinking of a black man right now who, 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 who just went to bat for me and my family as I have been preaching the gospel for a time and many others. And I thank God for my white brothers, the big old pastor, I forget his name, in Lilburn, Georgia. He took a liking to me, man, and helped me preach my first uh, citywide crusade in the uh, municipal convention center, center uh, south of Atlanta. Man, he went to bat and paid for my flyers and paid for this and that and got me in the building. White man. Didn't know me from Adam's house cat, if you will. Thank God for my brown brothers when we needed at one time a house to stay in. My Mexican brother came through. Man, and he, he, he knew how to deal. You know, he knew, he knew how to operate. He knew, <laughs> he knew how to make it uh, easy on us. Thank God for Brother Ramirez. And then when, when things went down, 
and things went south in his life and his wife suddenly died uh, he wanted me to pray with him and I did and uh, we gave him a book by Billy Graham in Spanish thank God for our Indian brothers and our Asian brothers who who can look at a computer and make it do something do whatever <laughs> do stuff you can't even imagine I'm looking for an Asian brother right now. I'm looking for an Indian brother right now to uh, take over uh, something that we have going on because they can they can make that computer sing. Oh yes, oh yes. I told you yesterday there are people, racists, that have different gifts and talents given to them by God. There are families that have family gifts. We all have individual gifts. So don't cut off your nose, my beloved, to spite your face, man. America is a great place to live. And uh, and we ought not to be, the president, nobody else ought to be telling anybody to go back where you came from if we're American citizens. Uh, no, we ought to be happy. We ought to be thankful. We ought to be grateful right here in America. I thank God. Allow me to say something about some white folks who did something great. Dr. Jerry Falwell Jr., uh, Dr. Jerry Falwell Sr. had the vision for Liberty University. No matter how you feel about Dr. Jerry Falwell Jr.'s uh, politics, thousands of black folk have benefited from that vision. But let me tell you something. It was not Dr. Jerry Falwell Sr. who built Liberty University. I've been to the graduations. All of my children have graduated, all of my black children have graduated uh, from college multiple times. So have I at Liberty University. It was, it was Dr. Jerry Falwell Jr. God used him to fulfill the vision of his father. And it's a wonderful thing. Some white folks. And yes, I would like to see them hire more blacks. But we thank God for the white folks who built that university. It has been a blessing to millions down through the years. And one of the reasons why I can say that, and one of the reasons why I say that is because I've never seen an institution committed to Christian excellence. Lay aside your feelings about the politics and who he supports. Lay aside that. And I, and I would lovingly encourage Dr. Jerry Falwell Jr. to uh, lay off all that for the school's sake so that many others can benefit from that great institution. You can get your education there and they're going to be fair with you. So thank God for the white brothers. Thank God for the black brothers. Thank God for the brown brothers. Thank God for the red brothers and the yellow brothers. <coughs> They're all precious in God's sight. God loves everybody whether you love them or not. God loves me whether you love me or not, man. So, you know, get with the program. And I'm going to go ahead and bring this to a close. I have so much more to say, but first, let me wrap it up by saying this. It can't be denied that for a long time, <clears throat> whites have been in the majority and have had many advantages in this country. And all of that happened under God's sovereign hand. 
Yes, it did, whether you like it or not. However, demographic researchers tell us that within a couple of decades, people of color will be the majority in this country. So somebody needs to start making friends with somebody. White folks need to start making friends with black and brown and red and yellow folks and black and brown and red and yellow folks need to start making friends with white folks as we pursue a more perfect union. God is not ignorant of such shifts for the times in which we live and the places where we live are under his sovereign hand. Ladies and gentlemen, because I have been so long time with you, I have a whole half of sermon to preach. Uh, but by the grace of God, I will pick it up on Monday as I will be preaching something different tomorrow and on Sunday. And uh, Lord willing, we'll see you back here on Monday. If the Lord should tarry his coming and we live, but right now, speaking to Christians, if you are a Christian brother or sister, listening today or watching today or participating today in some way live or on demand in a few hours, here are three things you need to do. Number one, confess and repent of your pride. For racism and prejudice is rooted in pride. And we all have it, and I'm not talking just to the white people, I'm talking to black people, brown people, red people, yellow people. In our uh, races, our respective races, we have racists in our respective races who are that way because of pride. Some have terroristic style pride, which is permanent almost. It takes... Uh, a whipping it takes some punishment for them to change we would call the, uh, we would call those the white supremacists for example or the black supremacists there are Mexicans who think they're better than whites and blacks okay whatever the case you need to repent you need to confess your sin and you need to repent if you're a child of God lost people don't even know what I'm talking about they are not, they're not convicted about hating other people. You already know what your sins are. Confess your sins and repent. Number two, pray for your brothers and sisters in Christ. Black folks and white folks. The lost souls of black folks and white folks. Pray for everybody. Pray, instead of talking so much and having symposiums and having these little fake conferences and meetings and swapping pulpits for no reason. Just pray. Have we even done that? See, that's the problem. We don't do what God has told us to do. That's the problem. The main reason why, along with some people not being born again, that this problem has not been resolved and we are still caught up in W.E.B. Du Bois's vision of the color line, the color line, which is stupid, is because the church has been, in the words of Leonard Ravenhill, playing instead of praying. And I don't think there's a God-fearing pastor or preacher who would be uh, would contradict what I just said. And I say that in other words as the old preachers used to say uh, without successful contradiction. So don't you pray for your brothers. Pray for your white brothers. Stop cussing them and being mad at them and hating them and, and being resentful and bitter. Pray for your white brothers. Pray for your black brothers. 
And if they're not saved, pray for their salvation. And pray that they would repent of their sins and get back to their first love, the Lord Jesus Christ, if they are saved. Pray for the souls to be saved in every community, around every church, be they black or white. Some churches are going to stay black. Some churches are going to stay white, and that's okay. As long as you keep on doing the Great Commission, and you keep the main thing the main thing, and you keep on praying and stop playing, then everything will work out just fine. And you'll have some black folk in your white church, and you'll have some black folk, white folk in your black church. Oh, yes, you will. Pray and preach the gospel. Pray for others to be saved. Pray for souls to be saved. And do your part by witnessing to the lost at any cost. Let's stand for prayer. Holy Father God, we give you the glory, praise, and honor for what you have done here today. For Lord, you consistently show up and show out. We are amazed at how you have done that and how you do that. Even when oftentimes we don't feel like doing our part, you somehow uh, give us the gas, the fuel, to do what you have called us to do. And we give you the glory, praise, and honor for that. And we pray now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you'll help all of us who name the name of Christ to confess our sins and to repent of our pride, our prejudice, and our racism, and our hatred of other people, particularly in this climate created by two presidents. I mean, uh, not created by two presidents, but uh, certainly egged on by two presidents. And uh, with hatred and racism seething in the country on every side. Have mercy and grace upon us. Forgive us of our sins. Help us to repent before this wonderful country is destroyed by a civil war that will make the last civil war look like uh, a skirmish. And I do pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, continue to bring down judgment upon the church. For we are guilty and we are at fault. Sad to say, some have led the way. And some of us like the division. We like to talk about racism, but we don't want it to change. So have mercy and grace upon us as Christians and forgive us from our sins. Help us to repent and help us to turn from our evil ways. Now, Lord, there are some people uh, who are listening to me right now and don't even know what we're talking about. They cannot imagine a church or a Christian being racist, but uh, we do have that problem. And so we pray that you will help them to look past all of that foolishness and sin somehow, some way and help them to confess their sins and repent of their sins and trust Christ as Savior themselves today. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for a sake. Amen. Now, beloved, if you are with us today, you may be seated. And uh, you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and the free pardon of your sins. Allow me to show you how you can place your faith and trust in Him, Jesus Christ, who loves everybody, who created everybody, who loves everybody, and has appointed where you are right now for your soul's salvation from the power of sin and from the punishment of sin, which, is, which will be in eternal hell if you die without trusting Christ as Savior. First, dear friend, accept the fact that you are a sinner and that you have broken God's laws. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short 
of the glory of God. Second, accept the fact that there is a penalty for sin. For the Bible says very clearly in Romans 6.23, for the wages, the paycheck, for your sin is death. Now you know it, it is not normal for you to be alive, to see the sun, to touch the ocean, to enjoy the pleasures and benefits of life, and then all of a sudden you're dead and gone. You know, you know something is wrong. Well, it's because of sin. Sin is what messes things up. And it's what how and that's how we have messed up our lives, and we have messed up God's world. And God hates sin. The Bible says God is angry with the wicked every day. That's in the book of Psalms. Third, accept the fact that you are on the road to hell. And by the way, let me just tell you people, on this earth, you're going to see judgment come upon this earth in the great tribulation like you've never seen or heard about in the history of the world because of sin. So uh, sin is bad, and God hates it. I mean, he hates it. He hates it so much that he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for sin. To save you from the consequences and the punishment of sin. Man, we laugh about it today and make little funny jokes about sin and all of that uh, mess. And, and, and but. Sin is not a funny thing, man. It's not. It's nothing funny about it. Jesus Christ said in Matthew ten twenty eight, for Jesus Christ preached more on hell than anybody in the Bible. Jesus Christ preached more on hell than he did about heaven. You know why? Because sin is very serious, and you will go to hell for eternity if you don't get your sin problem, your sin debt, taken care of. And the only way you can do that is not by keeping the Ten Commandments as I preached earlier today, but by trusting Jesus Christ. But Jesus Christ said in Matthew 10, 28, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. You ask, who's going to hell? Well, the Bible states, in the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verse 8, but the fearful. People too afraid to get saved, too afraid to follow Jesus because they are afraid of what mom and them might say, or what their co-workers might say, or what their classmates might say. Thank God, however, for those young Christian people today in school who are still standing for Christ, who have believed on Christ. Then he mentions the, the, the fearful, and then he mentions the unbelieving. People who call themselves atheists and agnostics, who refuse to believe on Jesus Christ, who refuse to believe in God. And the abominable, these are sinners who go beyond the pale. They can't just sin normally, if you will. which all sin is abnormal. But they go beyond the pale. Just, just today it is reported. A grown man, if you saw him in McDonald's, you would think he was a businessman. He followed a little four-year-old girl in the McDonald's bathroom and raped her. That is beyond the pale, man. You need sex. You want sex? Get with a woman. It's wrong still if you're not doing it in marriage, but this right here is an abomination, man. Men, grown men, raping little girls and little boys. Priests, raping little boys and little girls. Beyond the pale, abominable people. These are they who are homosexuals. Now, I know it's not popular in America, but 
but this is beyond the pale. It's abnormal for a man to be rolling around in the bed with a man and a woman rolling around in the bed with a woman. That's beyond the pale. So where, where are they going? They're going to the lake of fire. They're going to hell if they don't repent and trust Christ as Savior. And I don't care what Andy Stanley says or anybody else says. And then there are those who are abominable in that day have sex with their own family members, flesh and blood. Mothers trying to have sex with their sons. Fathers trying to have sex with their daughters. Flesh and blood and even stepchildren are included. Brothers trying to have sex with their sisters. Sisters trying to have sex with their brothers. That's beyond the pale, man. That's abnormal. If you ever have any kind of desire for a family member like that, you need to run, not walk. There's something wrong somewhere. Then we have those who love their animals too much. They're trying to get sexual satisfaction with their animals. I don't care if you like it. So preach you ought not to mention this. This is happening across this country. There are people who love their animals more than they love their own children. And some are trying to have sex with their children. They have a word for it. Bestiality. Now we got another abomination happening. This one is not written down in the scriptures, but it is an abomination still. We've got men and women buying robots, basically mannequins. They're lying up in bed trying to have sex with a robot. You say, preacher, who said that's an abomination? I said it. It's an abomination in God's sight. You'll find out when you get there. So where are they going? They're going to hell. They're going to the lake of fire. They, there's no place else for them to go. If they don't repent of their evil and trust Christ as Savior. You mock my words. I'm not preaching the gospel every day for uh, nothing. And then there are murderers. People who kill other people. It's happening every day in every city. I marvel at how many people are being killed by others. Just uh, reported in the news today, beautiful young couple, the lady was 24 years old. They were traveling around the world. I guess it was their honeymoon deal. They had it going on. They were in Canada. And it just so happened a serial killer saw them broken down on the side of the road and killed both of them. Murderers. And whoremongers. By the way, we got murder we have we have whoremongers in the church. They're pastors who are whoremongers. They're pastor wives who are whores in the church. And I know you don't like it, but it's true. And all across the country, and if we, if we got the pastor and the pastor's wife whoremongering, you got whoremongers and whores in the church. So where are they going, preacher? They're going to hell. I'm getting ready to tell you in a minute. The lake of fire. People having sex with anybody they want to, even though they're married. And they loved, they not only love to have it so, they, they love watching it as well, as far as uh, pornography is concerned. A man was driving a truck the other day, was looking at pornography while he was driving, and he woke up in hell. What a way to go. He died watching pornography.
I hope he was saved. I don't know. Under the circumstances, probably not. And sorcerers, people who practice witchcraft. I'm still reading the word of God to you. Preacher, I didn't ask for all of this, I, I, I'm not, but I, I'm still going to tell you <laughs> whether you ask for it or not. I said, well, I'll tell you what, you, you can't preach in our church. Listen, I don't want to preach in your church if you can't take this kind of preaching. Because I'll have to backslide 25 times to get into fellowship. That's Vance Havner for you. And sorcerers, people who practice voodoo and witchcraft, read palms and look into uh, crystal balls, live by the horoscope, and that's what it is, a horoscope, and idolaters, people who put anything or anybody before God, and all liars, all liars, all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone which is the second death. And once you go on the other side of the gates of the lake of fire or the gates of hell, you can't come back. There's no second chance. One of the reasons why you're living right now is so that you will, as we read in the text, seek after God. Happily, you find Him. And you don't have to look any further. I'm telling you how to know God for yourself. For Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Now hell in the lake of fire is bad news, but I have some good news for you. Jesus Christ said in John 3.16, For God so loved the world, that includes you, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, that is, perish in hell, but have everlasting life. And just believe in your heart, dear friend, on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe in your heart that he died for your sins. He suffered, bled, and died for your sins, was buried, and rose from the dead by the power of God for you so that you can live forever with him. Pray and ask him to save your soul, dear friend, and he will save you. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou and you shall be saved. Right now, whether you're in this building or outside of this building, Romans 10, 9 and 13 says that if thou and you shall confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart, that God have raised him from the dead, thou you shall be saved. Saved from what? Saved from the power of sin and the punishment of sin? Saved from your foolishness? Saved from your empty life? For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you're willing to trust Christ as your Savior today, if you're willing to believe in your heart, that Jesus Christ suffered, bled, and died on the cross for your sins, was buried, and rose again. And you're willing to pray and ask him to save you, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I assure you that based upon the word of God, you will be saved today. And it'll be just like Jesus saying to the thief on the cross, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. One day you'll be in paradise with Jesus. So pray with me right now. And ask Jesus to come into your heart. To save your soul. Repeat after me phrase by phrase. And mean it from your heart. Holy Father God. I acknowledge that I am a sinner. I admit that I have broken your Ten Commandments. For I have put people and things before you, committing the sin of idolatry. I have lied before. I have stolen things before. 
I've coveted and lusted after people and things that don't belong to me. I have taken your holy name in vain. disobeyed and dishonored my parents. For Jesus Christ's sake, please have mercy and grace upon my soul. And please forgive me of these sins as well as many others. As I now, by your grace, believe with all of my heart that Jesus Christ suffered, bled, and died on the cross for my sins. And that he was buried and rose again on the third day. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to repent of my sins past. And to turn from my evil life to follow you in the new life. In Jesus Christ's name I pray and for his sake. Amen. Dear friend of mine, if you believed in your heart on the Lord Jesus Christ, that he suffered, bled, and died on the cross for your sins, was buried and rose on the third day, allow me to say to you congratulations on doing the most important thing in life, and that is trusting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, please go to GospelLightSociety.com and read my pamphlet titled, What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. Jesus Christ said, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Dear friend, if you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today, please email me at dw3 at gospellightsociety.com and let us know. We have some free material that we want to send you to help you grow in the faith. If you have a prayer request, please email that to us as well, and we will pray for you until you tell us to stop. Until next time, my beloved, God loves you. Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and rose again. By his grace, we love you. And may God bless you real good is my prayer. Let's all stand for our closing prayer. Holy Father God, we give you the glory, praise, and honor for what you did here today. It is absolutely magnificent and marvelous what you have done here today and all of these other uh, hundreds of days of preaching your holy gospel we thank you for the souls that have been saved and we pray for millions more to hear the gospel through this ministry that they would be saved and millions of christians would be encouraged and revived again and i pray that your holy name will be glorified jesus christ exalted now lead us, guide us, and direct us in the way that you have us to go throughout the remainder of this afternoon and evening. And help us to accomplish and to conquer what you would have us to do. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for us say, Amen. God bless you, dear friend. Until next time.